Hey guys, good morning, afternoon, evening, depending on where you're tuning in from. This is video number one in the series of videos that we'll be looking at Capture One version 10. In this video, I wanted to go over the import module and how to get your images into the tool. I think that's a good starting point. We'll get few images in, so we have something to work with, and then we'll start looking at the rest of the application in the future videos. Okay, so without any further ado, let's get started. So this is Capture One uh, version 10. Again, in the next video, uh, next or a couple of videos from, from, from now, we'll be looking at the interface and how to customize all of this. As you can see, there's a lot going on here. Uh, lots of menu options all over the place. There's some tabs around here. There's uh, quite a few options in the middle. And there's further options still towards the right of the interface. There's some panes here. So th there, there's, there's pretty substantial amount of customizations that you can do uh, within capture one to make it suitable to your to your liking however we're not going to be touching on that in this video as i mentioned this is strictly to import some images in and uh, then we'll have something to work with okay so there's different ways to get images into the tool uh, one of the ways is to click on this icon in in the left side uh, of the screen left top corner of the screen uh, you can also go to file import images, or you can use control shift and I shortcut on the keyboard uh, on Windows. On Mac, I'm sure it's something similar to that. I don't have a Mac with me here to, uh, to test that out. So once you click on that, you'll get a uh, dialog box in the middle of the screen. Now I've already pre-selected a folder, so that's why we're seeing some images in the preview here. But normally, you might not see anything in here until you make your selections in the import from uh, section. So just to go over this left side of the screen, we've got a number of options that go sort of sequentially top to bottom, and we'll examine each one of these in more detail. So the first one here is importing from. So this is where uh, Capture One needs to know the location of your images that you're trying to import from. So this could be an existing folder on your hard drive that you've already copied your files into, uh, but it could also be your SD card that you've just plugged into your um, computer or your um, card reader. If you've plugged in a card, I think uh, by default, Capture One will open this screen directly uh, right away, so you'll be able to import your images. Uh, but don't quote me on that at this point. So you can choose a folder uh, that you want to import from. Uh, again, I've already pre-selected a folder, so that's why I've got images showing up on the right-hand side here. The next option is import to, and this is an interesting one. So there's a couple, couple different things you can do here. So you can import either inside the catalog or within the current location. So let's go over what that means. So if you decide to import inside the catalog, Capture One basically is going to take over the management of the, of the, of the files. So that means it's going to copy all of the files that you've specified in the previous selection and import them into its own database. And it's going to manage its location, it's going to manage the folder structure, it's going to manage how these files are placed on the hard drive. And it's also going to manage the metadata and all the adjustments that you make to the files. Now that's true for both cases, but um, but the difference here is that you know the files really become the property of Capture One as far as uh, managing them and managing folders. The other selection, and, and this is the one that I recommend you use, is the current location. So what this means basically is you're putting files somewhere on the hard drive or on your network drive or some sort of an attached storage drive. And then you're telling Capture One, this is where my files are. Manage all of the adjustments, manage all of the raw processing that you need to manage. But I want to manage the location of the files and I want to put my own folder structure around them. I want to be able to do all of that myself. And this is really a good option because it allows you to not be tied down to, a, to a, a one application. Uh, you can easily switch to a different application and point that application to your folder structure and have it understand it. Whereas if you have, a, have your files in the, in the catalog, you know, you have to export them from the catalog and, and then, you know, do all of that managing afterwards. So again, you know, long term usability, I think using the current location option is probably your best bet. Next option is, is a good one again, uh, backup to. So as you're importing files into Capture One, it gives you um, an option to automatically back them up to another location. So this is a really good option uh, if you're like me and you tend to forget to do that quite a bit. 
uh, this allows allows you to have that that option right off the bat so basically all you do is click enable backup down out here choose a folder you can select uh, again local storage again that's not a good option for for backup but you can you know back it up to your cloud drive you can back it up to an external hard drive whatever the the options are that you have available so that's a very good feature and i i do use that quite a bit naming uh, as you can see here it says naming is disabled when storing files in current location so again because you're choosing to manage your files yourself capture one is going to stay away from naming the files and let, let you do all of that management yourself now if we had selected inside catalog in this option here now you can see that there's some options that you have for naming now by default capture one will name it with the current image name um, you can also add a job name if you like uh, and then it gives you a little sample at the bottom of what that file name is going to look like now if you wanted to add some extra information and extra metadata onto the file you can use the, the extra menu here click on that and as you can see here capture one gives you all kinds of options as far as different things that you can add to the file name and this is sort of automatically generated by the combination of what camera you've used by date you know things like that for instance you can see here you know you can add dimensions of the file to, to the name you can add uh, things like current year you can think you can add things like you know firmware version for some reason if you wanted to keep track of that so there's all kinds of options that you have as far as naming your files uh, which is really nice if you if you wanted to use that feature as well I'm going to flip this back to current location just like we had it before. Uh, metadata again, so that will add um, copyright information if you wanted to add some in uh, for each file as well as a description. File information, if we were to click on one of these files here, you can see that some information gets populated. It's a very basic, basic data. Obviously, Capture One will store all of the EXIF data from the file, but uh, this is just showing you a little bit of basic information such as the name, you know, the date that the file was shot. Uh, the kind of camera that you used, uh, file type, uh, and the size. And just just so we're clear on everything here, I, I've got some JPEGs here because this is sort of a test folder that I had that I selected for this video. Now, obviously, Capture One is a is a raw processor, so most likely you'll be importing raw files into it. But it allows you to store all kinds of image files. So as you can see here, uh, perfectly fine with importing JPEGs as well. Let me just make this a little bit bigger here at the end. And the very last option is adjustments. So uh, this is something that I personally don't use, but uh, I know of some people that uh, that do use this feature quite extensively. And basically what you can do with this is you can add built-in styles directly to your files as you're importing them into, into the database. So for instance, if you wanted to import something and, and apply a black and white filter to every single file that you're importing, you have that option. If you really know these filters well and you get to sort of understand how they uh, act on, on different file types you know you can you can you can apply certain effects uh, directly to your your uh, files that you're importing again I don't tend to use this because I like to sort of examine each file uh, myself and, and work with it as I need to but it's an option that that you have for instance if you know for instance your camera always you know underexposes a little bit and and you always need to sort of up the exposure by say a quarter of a stop or something like that you know that's something that you could uh, make a preset for and apply it to all your images as you're importing them so that kind of gives you a, a good starting point when you start working on the files um, and do, doing some post-processing so again it's a, it's a good feature uh, personally don't use it the include existing adjustments is also a, a nice touch it basically allows capture one to understand some of the adjustments that might have been made to the files using a different application so for instance if you had uh, come from Lightroom and you've made some adjustments to the file. Now, let me preface this by saying that Capture One will not one for one transfer all of your Lightroom adjustments. Uh, it does not understand all of them, but there's some that it will understand, like some basic exposure, uh, maybe some basic sharpness and things like that it can understand. So it will apply all of that automatically to your images, which is kind of nice. It gives you again a, a better starting point than what you would have otherwise had. Okay, and once you've filled out the information in here all you really need to do then is select images that you want to import so you can see because i've only selected one down here it'll tell you import one image but obviously we can select multiple images and as you select more the number of images to import goes up um, and again you can click something like Control a to select all of them 
and then import six images. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. And as you can see, there's a little progress bar that shows up, letting you know what's going on. And as the images are being imported, they will start showing up on the right hand side. Again, once we go through the adjustments of um, or configuration of the interface, you can have this um, placed somewhere else. You can have it down at the bottom. You can have it, you know, populate in a, in a full screen browser. So there's all kinds of op options that we have. But by default, your images will show up on the right hand side in the viewer. And as you click on one of these images, you can see that the full full uh, resolution image pops into the main pane. Okay, so that's that's it for this video, guys. This is just a quick um, overview of how to import your images. So now that we have some images in here, in the next video, we're going to start looking at the interface. Okay, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.